I took <laughs> words. Painting on leather. Let's get started. Hi, internet friends. I'm UB, and today I want to talk about a thrift store adventure I went on last spring, all having to do with leather. See, I was frequenting my local thrift stores in search of items that I could upcycle and sell on my online store, but on this particular day, I wasn't really finding anything. I was totally out of luck. Lazily procrastinating around the furniture section of my local Goodwill, I glimpsed a large cardboard box. You know, the kind that you would get like a, a case of paper in, but it was kind of beat up. I didn't really think twice about it. I didn't even look inside. I circled the section one more time trying to psych myself up just to go home and work on some projects and stuff when I caught this box out of the corner of my eye a second time. I had to look again. What is that? Inside the box were a number of large rolled up and packaged up leather desk mats in two shades of gray blue, two different colors. I couldn't tell how many were in the box, but the stickers on their packaging told me that they were meant to be put under a keyboard and mouse on somebody's desk in an office or something like that. I had to see how much this box cost. This was exactly the kind of thing I could upcycle. $7.99, a yellow sticker. And the half off color of the day, yellow. So I grabbed that box for $4 and sped home to check out what I had actually found. At home, I counted them. There were 20 in total of both the light gray and the dark gray blues. And most of them came with a cute little leather strap that you could use to roll them up. Now, I've done small leather working in the past. I was a 4-H kid for a brief stint in my childhood, and I've always had a fascination with woodland elves of the fantasy genre, so it would be kind of awkward if I never played with leather before. But this leather was of lower quality, and its color didn't really lend itself to the leather stamping or burning that I was accustomed to. So I did a little bit of research, and I ordered the supplies I would need. I found out that there's such a thing as leather acrylic paints. It's paint that's made specifically to bend and expand and contract the same as leather will, so it's not going to crack the way that any old paint would. You don't want to be just painting leather with any acrylic paints or something like that because it will crack after it dries. I also learned that low quality leather often comes with a plasticky kind of coating on top top that you have to remove before you can paint the surface. So while I waited for my paint and my clear coat to come in the mail, I took all of the leather desk mats outside and used acetone nail polish remover to take that coating off. You always want to do something like this in a well-ventilated area with the proper masks and eye protection. Here's what I've learned after having painted 13 unique designs on these desk mats. Firstly, you you want to make sure that you're painting on the proper side of the desk mat. This is a mistake I made twice. If you accidentally paint on the back side of these mats, you'll end up painting on a pretty rubbery coating and your paint will never quite cure right, which means that it's going to be sticky. It seems like an obvious thing to say, but it really is an easy mistake to make. So far, I've used colored Sharpies or ink pens in order to do my initial sketch on the mat. Both are fine and they don't seem to affect how the paint cures to the leather surface, but I'd say it's advisable to just use a marker color that's somewhat similar to the leather color that you're drawing on so that you don't have to worry about some of that drawing peeking through when you're done with your painting. If you use something like an ink pen where the contrast between the pen's ink and the leather is really high, Sometimes you'll get a peak of that sketch coming through your end painting, and that's not always a great look. On a few of my mats, I also just eyeballed the designs. I took a small paintbrush and mixed up a little bit of the base color that I knew I was going to be working with and just kind of drew it out. But you really only want to do this if you're confident in your sight drawing abilities, because this is not a paint that you can easily just 
wipe off. If you've ever used acrylic paints, and I know that most of us have, the process is the same with the leather acrylic paints. These paints dry in approximately the same amount of time as traditional acrylic paints. They're applied very similarly. You can just use any old paintbrush as long as you're making sure to wash it right away so that the paint doesn't dry into the brush. The only complaint I have about leather acrylic paints is that the lighter colors tend to be very transparent. So you're going to need a lot of layers of those more light colors, whether it's a skin tone, a white base for something, or just a light color in general, you're going to need a lot of layers of that to really make the color pop. In this fairy painting, I never quite got the sketch lines on her face to go away, but I had to stop layering paint at a certain point because I was afraid that if the paint got too thick, it would crack anyway. And then what's the point of doing that piece, you know? The fairy design here is based off of an ink sketch that I did probably a couple of weeks ago, and I'm working on my line confidence. So in the sketch, I have a lot of bold lines and I'm working on line weight, which are a lot of artsy buzzwords. But the point being that the style between that sketch and this painting are a little bit different, but I really loved being able to bring a little bit of color to this gorgeous little fairy that I drew. I've really been enjoying leather paints in the past few months, and I paint a mat or two here and there, and some of them have even found homes with my very excited customers, which I love to see. The mats don't have to be placed on a desk either. They're really great for protecting your wood furniture from watering plants or pets or what have you, and they make awesome table runners too. When I'm done painting each design, I clear coat the entire mat with Angelus brand matte acrylic finisher. And it's also made specifically for leather, so it's going to stretch and bend with the material. And it just helps protect the mat from cracking, from sun damage, from water damage, all of that good stuff. I found that if you apply too many coats of the finisher, you'll end up with a tacky sort of surface. So you want to keep this to one to two coats of that are very thin so that it all cures properly. And you can apply the finisher with either a paintbrush or an airbrush, whatever makes the most sense for you. If you want to try acrylic leather paints for yourself, I highly recommend the Creative Nation 12-pack of colored paints. The seal inside each pot of paint makes it really easy to just poke a little hole so that you're able to pour just the right amount for whatever you're mixing. It's really quite expensive paint, so you want to be careful with how much you're using at any one time. I even got in the habit of scraping it up off of my paint palette at the end of each day and putting the excess back into its pot because it is something you don't want to be wasteful with. I can also recommend Angelus brand flat black and flat white acrylic leather paints. I found that I used black and white a lot when I was painting, so I had to buy more of those two colors to use up the rest of my other colors. The Angelus brand comes in slightly larger bottles. They're four ounces. It really has quite the longevity. I've also found that the small pots of paint dry up after a few months of not really using them if the seal is broken. So having the bigger bottles, they don't dry up nearly as quick. With that being said, acrylic paints and leather aren't exactly eco-friendly materials. Leather, because of the water consumption it takes to create it, especially low quality leather, and acrylic paints because they are petroleum-based, plastic-based materials. So, had this not really been a upcycling project, I don't think I would have played with either of these materials, but I am glad that I did, because more than anything, what this channel stands for and what I stand for is knowing your materials well enough that you can intentionally make a decision about when a not-so-eco-friendly product really needs to be used. When you can make eco-friendly 
decisions in your process of making, I'm always an advocate for doing so. But sometimes it's necessary to use something that is plastic-based, whether it's for resilience to weather, safety, like in the case of my backpack's eyes, those are all safety eyes that I buy in because I don't want a small child to choke on the eyes of these cute little purses, or because there just isn't an eco-friendly alternative out there. And for a project that is leather-based, there might not be much for options as far as decorating it. All in all, painting on leather is actually a lot of fun, and it's really cool to know that you can protect your designs with an acrylic finisher on top as well. This could have so many uses, whether it's in cosplay, upcycling projects, and more, and I might play with some of that after I'm done painting all of these mats. I even used some of the black leather paint to refurbish my desk chair, which has been through some stuff with various projects in my workshop, so it was looking pretty grody for a little bit there. Just a little bit of leather paint and it's back to looking pretty snazzy. With all that being said, thank you so much for getting to the end of this video. Here's 1,000 experience points just for that. Make sure to subscribe and like the video, it really does help out a lot. Thank you so much to my patrons, Mark, Nathaniel, Twyla, and Liam. You guys are awesome, and if you'd like to join them in supporting the crazy little projects that I do here, please visit patreon.com slash ubdraws. Don't forget to drink some water. Thank you so much again, and have a good rest of your day. Peace!